most important things that we heard that night. You were in the ring. You saw the camera in front of you. There was a hot mic. And a lot was made of you saying and asking yourself, do I still have it? What was going on through your mind? And do you want to clarify that situation? Well, yeah. I mean, if you guys would like to, I mean, my whole thing is just always staying in the loop of things. So, you know, um, when it came to you guys, like with the camera and everything, I mean, I know what a red dot looks like, guys. So it's just a strategic move. I know I got everything in me to always win. That's why we call it a takeover. So, you know, my whole thing was not even about that. It was just a strategic move. So people still talk about Teofimo Lopez, which they've been doing. You know, one of the most important things that... That sounds like shenanigans to me. So let's get the particulars out of the way. It is 11.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on T-Street Controversy with Traversial Media and Fight View 360. So... Um, June the 10th of 2023 in the Madison Square Garden Hulu Theater, not the big room. We're going to talk about that later on. Former undisputed champion at 140 pounds, Josh Taylor. He only has the WBO now, not like he's lost his belts, but one by one, he's been dropping his titles and um, staying longer at 140 pounds, likely to avoid politics uh, at 147 and the bigger paydays for him will be at 140 pounds. Uh, Former Josh Taylor is going to be taking on former unified 135-pound champion Tiafima Lopez. Depending on how you look at the WBC franchise situation before he fought Cambosos, some may say he was undisputed, but I say unified. WBA Super, IBF, WBO, Ring Magazine, and the WBC franchise championship from some shenanigans that the WBC BC did for Lomachenko. Well, anyway... Um, in both of their last fights, they didn't look good, but when it comes to Tiafimo Lopez from my side, and this is probably going to be the last, this is going to be the first fight I've been to since Gary Russell text stuck student AMBR and Jason Williams versus, uh, excuse me, Jason Rosario versus uh, J-Rock Williams. And I was supposed to be at Shakura Stevenson versus Miguel Mariaga, if I remember correctly, but that's the week the country shut down. I'm talking about that's when COVID hit like hard. Well, anyway, welcome to the show. I'm sitting here doing some real-time research for my article. So what I've been trying to get back into the habit of doing is when I have the video in my head, just go ahead and get it out the way. So let's talk. Um, there was a hot mic at the end of the fight where Tia Female seemed to be questioning if he won or if he still has it or not. Now, me going back to check out my video on the fight, I see that... I put Rob but question mark. And when I do that, it's not saying that it's a robbery. It's a headline. It's just a question mark because I know when it's a close fight, people are going to be saying that. But people do be getting triggered by that. And I put TFMO gets close. And I notice how I put that in caps. This is how I jog my memory. Win over Martin. So I think that he won the fight. But as I'm reading the comments here, you hear you see stuff like, uh, people thought that the people's thoughts at the time, T Fimo is food. He knows it. If he can't cut the ring off against this level of fighter, he's food. Even Martin says pro gray, uh, the defeated tone was sad to hear, but man, it's going to be rough waters when he faces top dogs at 140. They'll eat him alive. Um, Tio can only go as far as his dad allows him to. I think he reached his ceiling. His dad put in some basics and now it's time to change trainers and polish up skills like Floyd Sr. would be a great fit. So what I'm getting from the comments is people, including myself right, right now, I have concerns, is like, how does he feel? You know, like, does he still have it? For example, here's that hot mic situation. Now, he's saying during that uh, post interview, I don't know how many days uh, after this was that, you know, he was just, you know, he know the cameras are watching. He's trying to get people talking. Man, no, nah, I'm not trying to hear that shit. So I forgot what broadcast this was, but Josh Taylor was here in the States, which was a surprise to me because remember, those allegations and rumors were going around that maybe, maybe they were true. Maybe they're lifted now, but he couldn't travel along with other former MTK uh, Daniel Kennehan fighters. 
But now, as we know, he can clearly travel. So I was wondering myself, and I wonder if there's a bigger story behind the scenes on why uh, Tia Fimo and Josh Taylor didn't have a press conference. For example, let's listen to this. Um, only five minutes long, but we're going to, you know, skim through it. Where, and I forgot which card this was. Was this Ramirez? Was this Jose Ramirez versus uh, Richard Comey? Where Josh uh, Taylor was there, the Tartan Tornado? What is he, 18-0 uh, with uh, 13 KOs? 19-0 with 13 KOs. Tia Fimo is 18-1 with 13 KOs. Well, let's listen to this. Announced as of tonight, the WBO Junior Welterweight World Championship between Josh Taylor and Tia Fimo Lopez is official. Taylor will be defending his title at 19-0 at Madison Square Garden on June 10th on ESPN. The former undisputed lightweight champion, Teofimo Lopez, against Josh Taylor, the guy who claimed undisputed status at 140 pounds, on ESPN from Madison Square Garden on June 10th. And now they join Mark Kriegel. Thank you, Joe. Champ, Josh Taylor, we're all sorry about the passing of, of your mentor, Ken Buchanan. We know what happened when he went to Madison Square Garden against the great Roberto Duran. How does your fight with Teofimo Lopez end there? My fight with Teofimo Lopez ends up the same way, except it's me knocking him out. So I'm completely 100% confident in this fight doesn't go past six to eight rounds. Teofimo, how does it end, my friend? Now 25. Becoming the Ring Magazine, undisputed. Hey, that's I'm looking forward to it, man. WBO world title, two world titles on the line. Let's get it. Josh, his last fight in the garden with Sandor Martin, was that a reliable indicator of who Tiafimo is in the ring? I don't know. Um, as I can say, that he didn't look too good in his last fight, you know. Um, so, he, he, But I'm not preparing for that last performance. I'm preparing to, for the best version of Tiafimo Lopez. But still, that's still not good enough to beat the likes of myself, you know. Um, he's going to say the same thing about my last fight. My last fight was a pile of dogs and dirt as well. So the well, both of us had crap well, last performances. Him. Let's ask him. Tiafimo, was Josh's fight against Jack Catterall, is that indicative of who he is or was it an aberration? It don't matter, man. To be honest, it don't matter. You know, who he fought was Jack Catterall, who's Southpaw. You know, I'm orthodox, so I'm looking forward to putting it on the show. You know, like I always do. Put them in front of me and I'll beat them. I don't need to see much more. All right. Listen, you uh, you called him the, the, the B word on Twitter. Okay, that's what people do today. Were you hyping it up or you really believe that? Nah, man, I'm the best. Hey, like I say, man, I want the best and I fight the best all the time. I don't duck or dodge nobody. And I think Josh Taylor definitely knows that. So looking forward to this fight. Hey, and I just want to ask Taylor, shouldn't this fight be in the Mecca, not the theater? I think Listen. it should be in the big one, yeah. Absolutely. It, absolutely. It'll be, it'll absolutely. Be big enough. I'm glad I you think guys it will agree. Be, I think we'll sell out because you're going to talk some and I'm going to talk some. Yeah, I wonder what the decision is behind that. I mean, it's not like it's not available, uh, but do they have some type of tracking data to show that, like, yeah, like, we put this in the big room, it's not going to really sell, you know, between Josh Taylor and uh and uh Tiafima Lopez and I, I think that the big room excuse me not the big room um the Hulu theater seats what eight thousand or so correct me if I'm wrong it's not five that seems too low I think it's like eight right let me check real quick let me see if I can do do a little quick uh seating capacity let's see here fifty six hundred there you go. 5,600. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting for it to sell out, but I, I just was thinking, like, shouldn't they have had it in the big room or whatever? But um, going back to Tia Fimo, he just seems a little broken, you know? It's been weird for him the last, like, a uh, few years, even a few years, even going into the, into the um, uh, Loma fight. That's when it seems like things started really taking a turn. He has some bitterness about you know like top rank not really and top rank was on some bullshit at the time because it was almost like they was writing to Fimo off to lose to Lomachenko by the way uh excellent lead in card um I believe they don't have any cards in between I'm not sure but you have made a 20th 
uh, between uh, Haney versus uh, Loma and Taylor versus Lopez. But on May the 20th on pay-per-view at 60 bucks, by the way, which is, you know, that's the step. That's it is a step in the right direction, even though I think it should be on regular ESPN. But you have uh, Devin Haney, the undisputed champion at 135 pounds. No frills, no franchise, no nothing. Taking on Fasil Lomachenko. That's going to be on pay-per-view. I'm going to be covering the shit out of that card. Um, and then on June the 10th, you have this card. And right off the bat, if I haven't given my prediction yet, I got Josh Taylor. He's too big, you know, too strong, and Tiafimo seems mentally fragile. Now, on the side of uh, uh, Josh Taylor, my concerns there is him overstaying his welcome at the weight. Because 147 has a lot of politics. And between the fights they can have at 140, even if he may not get it, you know he's got to be thinking about guys like Ryan Garcia. You know, Javon to Tank Davis, you know, and him and Tank Davis been jarring back and forth. But I don't ever see the fight happening. But the point I'm trying to make is if he goes up to 147 and he knows this, his team knows this, he'll run into the same problems that Terrence Crawford ran into because uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, a PBC politically dominated division of 147 pound division. Now, as far as Tiafimo Lopez is concerned, he had really nowhere else to really go. And sometimes you wish he can just keep his mouth shut because he kind of gets himself in trouble. Um, but let's talk about the 140 pound division as a whole. First, let's listen to a little bit more of this. My bad. Me, we were together. Hey, I really don't want to talk about him. And I got the feeling it was personal, was it? Is no, it's it? never personal. It's never personal. It's business. This is a fight game. He's a good fighter. He's been talking a whole lot of smack about me for a couple mm -hmm. of years. And now, you know, you got to be careful what you wish for. He's now got it, so now he's never going to get a doing there. What's the best thing Tiafimo Lopez does? He's very good at Everything. what he does. He's very good at what he does, but I see a lot Everything. of holes in his game, so and I'm going to expose it the as greatest. well. Tiafimo, the greatest. what's the best thing Josh Taylor does? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. <laughs> Yo, All the guy does beat six undefeated be guys in a row. What? He never fought Tiafimo. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Can't wait to and see And by it. the way, can't wait to see listen, it. I'll tell you like this, man. I don't need to go to New Jersey. I got everybody coming over here. I'm at the UFC 287. I'm promoting our fight. Don't worry. Oh, I'm taking it. Oh, good. No worries, taking it to no. another level. Don't worry. Nobody, sweetheart. Hey, I'm, I'm glad you guys are on sweetheart terms. That's very nice. The last year and a half for the both of you has been very trying. Do you all have something to prove? Josh? Always. Hey, always. Always. Oh. Tell me just a WBO world title. These questions are not going anywhere. Magazine, the hundredth year this year, the fight of the century. That's what it is right here on the line. Don't tell me it's just a WBO ring, Matt. Don't tell me it's just a WBO world title. It's also the ring magazine. Yeah. Put that on the line. What's, what are the holes in his game? Oh, he's got plenty of holes. I'm not going to sit here and tell him and reveal them here. He knows he's got holes. He'll see holes in my game. Tier, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to be him. Tiafimo, what are the holes in Josh's game? You know, now that I'm thinking about it, this is a big fight for both of them because either lose, you know, see, it's it's a shame that we're in this era of, you know, you take one loss, two losses, three losses. You know, you really like start going, you know, like down and fighters like really lose their confidence. They let those losses get to them. But right now, like, I don't think that Tiafimo career can afford a loss. Like, he just don't seem like he's able to take another one. By the way, I don't understand what he meant by this either. But then again, you know, boxers, like just in all sports, but especially in boxes, in boxing, all, all fighters of all races, whether you're black, fucking white, fucking, you know, and you know I identify as Mexican, um, you know, like we all be saying racist shit sometimes, you know, as fighters. This is my last fight on ESPN. Oh, Ooh. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. This is why this fight means like everything to me. Yeah. If they want the black fighters, they could keep them. I brought Bud Light Ooh, to top yeah. rank. If they want the black fighters, they could keep them. Now, what does he mean by that? He's not even fucking uh, brave, fighting Braveheart. Like, Josh Taylor's from Scotland. And then when you look at, like, who's he talking about? Like, Devin Haney? He's got to be. Because here, let me pull up these rankings right here. The 140 pound division is not like a, 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 a black dominated division. I mean, yeah, you got Regis Progray. By the way, Regis Progray is going to be fighting Liam Paro next month, also in June on The Zone. Regis Progray has signed a multi-fight deal with The Zone, passing up on the top rank uh, uh, offer. 
Rulo Romero is getting a title shot. God knows how against Ishmael Baris Barroso. I covered him years ago. Surprising, shocking. He's fighting for a title. Um, Alberto Pulio felt that Vadates had to drop his belt. Then the winner of that would be the mandatory for O'Hara Davis. Davies, or does Davies have to fight somebody else? I forgot. I think he is the mandatory. So Brio Matias is in negotiations with a uh, matchroom, former top rank in PBC fighter. And then of course you have Josh Taylor taking on T. Fima Lopez and Arnold Barboza getting screwed over again. And then you have Jose Ramirez. Like what the hell is he doing? I won't be shocked if we see Jose Ramirez uh, take on a winner of uh, Lopez versus um, uh, Josh Taylor. But it's a division right now that's there can be an undisputed champion, but it's a little fractured. Now, one good thing about the division uh, 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 politically is a lot of these guys, like they can't go to 147 or they're going to want to run into PBC politics. So they have they're going they have to either go to PBC or continue to fight each other. So Tiafima Lopez last fight was against uh, Sandor Martin. That was in December of last year. Split decision. Uh, 94, 95, 96, 93, 97, 92. Tiafima was down in round number two. I think there was a slip, right? I mean, um, uh, like off balance kind of shot, but not like hurt. Uh, Josh Taylor's been on a nice layoff. Has a fought since February of last year. And didn't some dumb shit happen with the Jack Catterall rematch? Something with the box with boxer uh, Ben Shalom and that team didn't put something in the contract. I forgot. Let me see if I can Google that real quick. I'm doing live real time research here. My bad. My bad. Let's see. Uh, Josh. Josh Taylor. Uh, Jack Catterall. Let's see what happened there. I know it was some type of fluke, right? And it was a lot of postponements, too. I'm about to get mugged by Josh Taylor a second time. What is this world boxing news? Let's see. And Jack Catterall hasn't fought since, right? Mm, mm, mm. Somebody remind me down below in the uh uh comments of what happened and poor old Arna Barboza he just keeps getting screwed over Arna Barboza says matchroom refused to increase the purse bid for the power, power by what they won the purse bid doesn't make any sense Arna Barboza declined the WBO junior welterweight title eliminator against Liam Paro matchroom who promotes Paro bid 300 and what's that say I got a split in my screen 303,000 which would be split 60 40 in favor of Paro However, Bar Barbosa, who is promoted by Bob Bram's top rank, wants to clear the air and state that he is indeed interested in the fight, just not the terms dictated during a purse bid. Hey, like, listen, it's a purse bid, brother. But I do feel he they've been getting he's been getting screwed. By the way, I have this hoodie. Nice hoodie, man. So here's what we have so far for the undercard. Um, Xander Zayas versus Ronald Cruz, Jermaine Ortiz versus a uh, Humberto. Forgot the name that's circulating around right there, but Humberto something. Robson Contical is back. Nicholas Polanco, Henry LeBron versus Christian Tapia, Omar Rosario versus Juan Carlos Rivera, Bruce Shushu Carrington versus a TBA, and a Damian uh, Kinba versus a Helenman Ogian. I don't know how to pronounce that. You also have a competing card over on the zone as well. With uh, Mungi versus Derevianchenko, Shane Mosley Jr. versus Demetrius Ballard. But um, in a perfect world, in the rankings, in a perfect world, the winner of Tiafimo, Josh Taylor. See, you know, the division is fractured because you got Pro Gray, who's now on the zone. You know, you got. You know, Barroso, um, Roly Romero, that's PBC. Matias, we don't know where he's going. Going So maybe if Matias signs back with top rank, but it's looking like he's in heavy negotiations with Matchroom. But we're talking about in a perfect world. In a perfect world, we would see Josh Taylor 
and Tia Fimo Lopez winner take on Regis Progray for Taylor to be a rematch for Tia Fimo, if he was to win that'd be a nice uh, a good fight but you'd expect if Tia Fimo was to win Josh Taylor there would probably be a rematch there depending on how uh, you know bad the loss would be for Taylor if he was to lose I'm not really high on Jose Ramirez but you know maybe we can get Jose Ramirez versus Arna Barboza in some type of eliminator and then of course you got to factor in Sander Martins in the mix Ahara Davis is in the mix Ryan Garcia is at 147 now so how does he factor into the mix his first fight back and what title is he going to be pursuing and then you have you have you have it you have whatever happens between uh Devin Haney and uh Vasil Lomachenko because if Devin Haney wins he might move up but he's also talking to staying at 135 but what's the point of staying at 135 if you're not going to fight Tank Davis you dig what I'm saying or Isak Cruz so 135 and 140 it's a very confusing division right now well two divisions but as time goes on hopefully we'll be able to get some clearer answers but I got to be honest, I'm going with um, uh, Josh Taylor over Tiafimo Lopez, mostly because Tiafimo right now seems a little unstable when it comes to his uh, um, like boxing psyche. It's the best way I can say it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy and TraversialMedia.com. Thanks for watching.